On May 20th, 2014, GOES-14 was put into super rapid scan operations for GOES-R, or SRSO. Our scanning mode and what that is is one minute imagery available over extended periods that will allow us to see what we'll have available with GOES-R on a pretty routine basis for severe weather events where one minute imagery uh, can be called for. So on this particular day they were expecting uh, severe weather across Wyoming and Colorado so let's go ahead and zoom in and we can see during the early afternoon hours uh, convection developing over the um, Laramie Mountains right here and east of that you can see a couple different air masses in place uh, if we draw in the boundary between the air masses uh, looking something like this south of that line we see unstable cloud streets indicative of a uh, unstable air mass and north of that line we see stable wave clouds and indicating a more stable air mass. We see convection developing along the mountains and then as it gets close to this boundary right here we see a storm of interest that's uh, poised to move out into the uh, plains here towards the east. So let's uh, next let's look, look at a picture. What do these uh, unstable cloud streets look at look like from the ground? Oh, well, here's like what they look like from the ground. This is from the Cheyenne area, looking towards the northwest, and you can see these uh, cloud streets, uh, and then in the distance, further to the northwest, uh, developing cumulus that we saw in the imagery. Let's go on to our radar reflectivity from the Cheyenne radar right here. We can see we have southeast winds in place, uh, dew points in the mid 40s with temperatures near 70. And you can see this storm coming off the Laramie Range and developing and intensifying as it does so here. So next we're going to look at a picture of this particular storm at uh, about this time right here from this perspective being just about uh, due east of it. So here's how that storm looked at, at that particular time, and you can see the rain-free base here along with a uh, ragged base and um, nice side of the uh, rain-free base here as well. So a developing storm. We go back to our uh, one-minute imagery here, and I'll zoom in in southeast Wyoming here speed it up a little bit and uh, it's pretty interesting what's taking place because that boundary that we analyzed earlier is playing a key role here so I'll go ahead and uh, draw it in approximately like so here again we have our stable wave clouds north of that boundary unstable cloud streets south of that boundary and you can see that initial storm is pretty much moving along that boundary and you can see a little bit of a, a kink here that goes up towards the storm as you see these uh, cumulus clouds uh, moving into the storm uh, like so here so I'll go ahead and erase that so we have our initial storm and one uh, concern with it here would be if it moves off to the northeast, off the boundary, it would move towards this more stable air mass and become more elevated in nature and, and less of a severe threat. Meanwhile, if it stays along that boundary, uh, which it appears to for, for a good portion of this loop here, uh, it'll have access to the more unstable air mass and, and uh, have a more uh, potential for a uh, more intense storm here. So meanwhile to the west we see another storm developing kind of in the wake of that first storm coming off the mountains and then riding along that same uh, boundary maybe reinforced by outflow from the uh, previous storm here as well. So let's go ahead and look at the radar reflectivity for that later time. Here's our first storm further to the northeast and then here's the second storm uh, that's in its wake here coming off the mountains and going along that boundary here. Next what we're going to look at is a picture uh, of the second storm taken uh, right about here just east of the storm looking towards the west towards this storm. So at that time, the storm was looking like this here, where it had a rain-free base with some uh, lowerings underneath it here. This was at um, uh, 2051 UTC. And if we go back to our broader scale here and look around, you can see down here in Colorado we have some storms brewing. So let's go ahead and uh, zoom in. And 
if we look closely here in the area around Denver, you can see uh, this storm developing right here. And it seems to be merging with some other storms here, such as this one right here, kind of merges in with it and helps to intensify that primary storm a little bit more. Um, if you look to the west, you can see indications of a, a stronger outflow developing with that storm because uh, this storm it tries to get going right here, moves into the outflow from that uh, storm further to the east, and it quickly uh, dies off here. And then meanwhile, as you see this um, storm intensifying more and more, you can see indications of storm top divergence here uh, in this particular storm. So let's go on to our next loop here. This is a little bit later on, and if we zoom in, you can see, uh, first of all, up here in Wyoming and moving into western Nebraska, uh, that initial storm moved off to the northeast, uh, became more elevated in nature, not as much of a severe threat. Meanwhile, the primary storm, in terms of the most intense storm, stayed along that boundary and just uh, moved along it for a while as it moved into uh, Nebraska and went on to produce some, some additional uh, severe storms weather uh, as it moved into Nebraska. Meanwhile, down here in Colorado, you can see uh, this storm right here, which earlier we saw become the, the primary uh, storm as other storms were merging into it, which you can still see at the beginning of this loop. And uh, what, what we see here is quite a bit of uh, storm top divergence. So we can see a nice, hard, crisp edge to the anvil on the back side of the storm. That's a good indicator that a storm is uh, really intense. And then the other thing to look for here is um, actually rotation here within the storm itself as it's uh, moving towards the east. You can see rotation at uh, storm top level as well. If you look carefully right here, you can see in the wake of that storm, a hail swath, and that hail swath actually show, shows up in some lighter colors, these lighter gray or nearly white colors here. It actually begins to go uh, fade away uh, by the end of the loop, but you can tell it's a hail swath because it's not moving and it's right in the wake of that storm here. So that storm did produce quite a bit of hail, and you can see exactly uh, where it laid down that hail with that hail swath right here. Uh, another thing that's pretty interesting to note here is that on the back side of the storm, where you have uh, all the substance, the outflow on the back side of the storm, you see these wave clouds uh, developing back here on the more stable side as well here, which is just another indicator of how uh, intense this storm is um, moving off to the east. Finally, let's look at the radar reflectivity from the Denver radar. And uh, here's the storm right here. Like I said, it, it uh, merged with a number of other storms and became uh, more intense as it moved along. And then by the end of the loop, as it moved uh, just a little east of the Denver airport, it, it uh, just grew into size and uh, took on this S shape that we see uh, by the very end of the loop.